I'm Justin Loretz, I'm the reviews editor for What Mountain Bike Magazine and I'm reporting to you today for Dirty Little Secrets. Today I'm going to show you a brand new bike from a company that you probably won't have heard from before. The company is called Paduano. The model is called Kano and you'll notice immediately that this is a bike with some very special tubes. Everything you can see here that's metal, i.e. silver, is titanium and these black top tube and down tube here are high modulus carbon fibre. What's really interesting about this bike and really the feature which made it really exciting for me was this. This is an integrated seat tube. As you can see there's no separate seat post, it's all one piece, it joins into the frame. The benefits of this are a lighter weight frame, increased stiffness in the seat post, and as you can see, very sleek integrated looks. As you can see, the bike's striking. Um, you certainly don't confuse it with anything else. One of the benefits of using this particular design with titanium is that while you get the stiffness of having an integrated seat tube, you do also maintain a degree of comfort that you get only from titanium. The way it springs, the way it deals with vibration is unique among the materials used to create mountain bikes and it's a ride characteristic which is very hard to describe but it's extremely comfortable. Now one of the interesting things is that this style of seat post has become very popular over the last three or four years with high-end cross-country racing bikes similar to this. What's interesting is Paduano really were the first people to do it. Not two or three years ago or even five years ago or even ten years ago. Fourteen years ago Francesco Paduano built his first mountain bike frame with an integrated seat tube. Now obviously one of the problems with integrated seat posts, as you can probably tell already, is that it means there's very limited adjustment for the, for the seat post. Cleverly, Paduano have allowed for this. They use a traditional style seat post clamp at the top of their seat tube. And by loosening this bolt, you can adjust this head unit, which is made by PMP, another company from Italy, through around about uh, two, two and a half inches of, of adjustment. Uh, so if you combine that with the different saddle rail heights that you can get on saddles, you can probably give yourself somewhere in the region of four inches of saddle height adjustment through the range. Other interesting features on the bike, you can see the nice sweep here to what would normally be straight seat stays. Having this nice bend in the seat stays allows the rear end to have some vertical compliance. The frame remains extremely stiff laterally, which is what you want because as you put your power down through the transmission you don't want the bike to be flexing sideways. But what you do want is some comfort. Now obviously titanium is quite a springy, lively material anyway. It gives a very nice feel in hardtail frames. This just really helps make the back end feel extremely soft. One of the other interesting features of this bike is an integrated headset. As you can see, the headset sits right down inside the frame. There's no headset cup showing at the bottom. That means you can use a very big oversized head tube. With titanium, the bigger you can keep the tubes, the stiffer they'll be. This bike's unusual because it has quite a low bottom bracket. For cross-country racing, and it's actually not an undesirable thing, particularly on modern racetracks where there aren't a huge amount of rocks, generally speaking, and cornering stability is important. By lowering the bottom bracket height between the wheels, what you're doing is lowering the overall centre of gravity. And by lowering the centre of gravity, you increase stability. And that just creates a bike which sticks extremely well through the corners. So you can see it as an upside or a downside, it just depends uh, which side of the performance cross-country line you decide to come from. As you can imagine, being carbon and titanium, this bike doesn't weigh a great deal. It's built as it stands here to around about 19 pounds. It's designed around a three inch travel fork. This is an old SID uh, World Cup cross country fork. It's uh, slightly behind the times now, but it uh, matches this bike very nicely. It's quite retro looking, it works very, very nicely. It gives a good balanced ride. Overall, this is an interesting bike. Paduano, they're a father son operation, both called Francesco, and they hand build these bikes 
in Italy. There's nothing factory about it. They're, everything is handmade from the mitering, the cutting, the bonding. It's all done in house. So it really is an artisan build and it's fun to ride. It won't be for everybody's tastes. As I say, it is an out and out race bike. But if you like performance and you like speed on your, uh, on your single track or your cross country ride, it's a real race car of a bike. Paduano at the moment are looking for their first UK dealers. It looks as though they're gonna go with Cycle Fit in London. But if all else fails, you can certainly buy them direct via the internet. Uh, you just need to go to the Paduano racing.com website and they'll be happy to take all your measurements and learn all about the kind of riding that you do and they will tailor your Kano just for you. They do versions without the carbon tubes if you don't want the carbon with full titanium and they also do a 29er version with the 29 inch wheels if you decide you want those instead of these 26s. One thing's for sure, whichever Paduano you go for, you're going to end up with a unique piece of Italian craftsmanship.